Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Tyler Ruggie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are feeding all of my pets. So recently I did a Meet My Pets video, which will be linked down below, where I go through all of my animals and just show you guys all of my animals, a little bit about them, their names, all that stuff. And I got requested a ton to do a feeding all of my pets video so that you guys could see what all my animals eat and how they eat and all that stuff. So here we finally have it. And I will also link down below my house tour video because in that video I kind of show around my house and I go over where all of their enclosures are and what they look like and basically stuff like that. So if you're interested in that, the house tour will be linked down below as well. Also, if you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure to give this a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new here. And without further ado, let's get straight into feeding all of my pets. All right, so first up, we're going to be feeding the birds. We're about to start screaming, but Gizmo, you're getting your food. Settle down. So, so for the birds, so for the birds, so for, so for the birds. So the first thing that I feed my birds is fresh chop that I already have pre-made. And basically what this is, is just a variety of grains and there's some seeds in there and fresh veggies. So this time in the chop, I put um, wild rice, quinoa, chia seeds, romaine, dandelion greens, a little bit of parsley, broccoli, carrots, and bell peppers. I think that's everything. Also, I think I put some oats in there. So this is very nutrient dense. And what's really nice too is it's all fresh. So it's really, really good for the birds. So I give this to the birds first thing in the morning. And then in the afternoon, I'll usually take it out and then I'll give them their pellets. And for pellets, I usually give the birds uh, Rowdy Bush, or sometimes I switch it up, give them Supreme Natural or Harrison's. But right now I have Rowdy Bush, but we'll get to that later. So I'm just gonna fill up their bowls. Now Gypsy really likes the chop, and Gizmo isn't as big of a fan. He'll kind of pick at it a little bit, but he's not that keen on chop. So he's probably gonna be really disappointed when he finds out that this is what he's getting right now. So this is breakfast for the birds. Doesn't that look good? They eat better than I do. You excited for your chop, Gizzy? He's like, no, where the heck is the seed? All right, Gizmo. There you go. Yeah? Are you gonna eat it? He's like, no, I'm gonna make you throw it away. I'm gonna throw it on the floor, maybe, if you're lucky. Are you gonna throw the chop on the floor, Gizmo? Maybe against the wall, even? Yeah. How about you, Gypsy? Are you gonna eat the chop? There you go. Gypsy actually likes the chop. Thank you, Gypsy. All right, so next up we have to make salad for the buns. First thing I'm gonna put in there is romaine lettuce. Romaine is really good for bunnies. A lot of nutrients in them. You want to avoid iceberg lettuce because iceberg is basically just water. But romaine is good. So I'm gonna put a decent amount of the romaine in there and I just kinda Break it up a little bit for them. And then we have dandelion greens. The buns love dandelion greens. Once again, also really good for them. Last but not least, we're gonna do some fresh parsley. All right, so here we have the salad for the buns. Let's go give it to them. Are you excited for food? Is Olive excited for food? Yes, Desmond's always ready. There you go. Desmond just loves it. Look at him. He's just digging right in. Olive, are you gonna come get some of the salad? Amazing. And then they already have hay. I just gave them some Timothy hay earlier this morning and they should be good for now. So, 
I, you know, come in here and check throughout the day and give them more hay as needed because they do need unlimited hay. But yeah, they're just loving their salad right now. So I'll, I'll leave you alone to eat your salad in peace. Next up, we are feeding my blue tongue skink, Castor, and I always switch up what I'm feeding him, but one of his favorite things to eat is dog food, and dog food is actually really good for blue tongue skinks, as long as you're feeding them a good quality dog food, because it's already balanced, it has your protein and a lot of veggies and fruits and stuff mixed in there usually, again, if you have a good balanced dog food. So what I like to give my skink a couple times a week is the grain-free chicken honest kitchen dog food and what i really like about this dog food is on the ingredients list you can tell there's not a bunch of crap in it and everything in here is dehydrated so it comes in like a powder with you know some chunks in it and you just mix the powder with some warm water and it rehydrates and if you just read the ingredient list Starting from the top, dehydrated chicken, organic flaxseed, dehydrated potatoes, dehydrated sweet potatoes, dried apples, dehydrated celery, dehydrated honey, dehydrated pumpkin, dehydrated cabbage, dried bananas, dried papaya. You got it. The list goes on. It's just a bunch of veggies and some chicken and stuff. So I really like this for my blue tongue skink, actually. That's what he's getting today. I actually already prepared it. So it kind of looks like this. It's just a bunch of mush and I mixed in some fresh greens as well. I do like to add fresh veggies and fruits to it just so, you know, there's more fresh stuff in there for him as well. I also added some calcium without D3 and some multivitamins just because that stuff is obviously really important for reptiles. And I like to feed him in this little dish. It has a blue tongue skink on it. I'm gonna link the Etsy shop where I got it down below. I'm absolutely obsessed with this. And it's just so cute. He's on his own food dish. Put that in there for him. And then I'm also going to add just a little bit of fresh banana because Castor loves his banana. So here's what Castor's meal looks like. He he really loves it. It doesn't look, you know, it doesn't look really cute or anything, but it's good for him. There he is. Hello, Caster. Here you go. He's so excited. Says I gotta smell it first. See, he loves the banana. You good boy, Caster, yes, good boy. He's like, leave me the heck alone. I just wanna eat my food, okay? So next we're gonna feed Malachi, my bearded dragon. Look how silly he looks. What are you doing, Malachi? I'm gonna be feeding him some dandelion greens right now. I have to hand feed him because that's the only way I can get him to eat his greens is if I wiggle it in front of his face. Here you go, Malachi. I'm so jealous of anyone who can just make their bearded dragon a salad and put it in there and they'll just eat it. Like that's such a concept. Malachi, come on, you didn't even get any of it. And there's also some calcium without D3 on here as well. Seriously, oh, are you gonna go for it? Yes, there you go. Are you already full, Malachi? Seriously? So I'm gonna show you guys a little life hack to get your bearded dragon to eat their greens. And that is to take just a little bit of all natural bee pollen powder. And I just dip the tip of the leaf in there a little bit just to get a little on there like that. This is completely safe for bearded dragons to eat and they are obsessed with the taste of it. I'm not sure why. Yeah, he loves it. Good boy. So next up we can go ahead and feed Sealing, my dwarf African bullfrog. So I usually just feed him some roaches that are dusted in calcium. Oh my God. 
<laughs> wow. Anyways, have your roaches. Oh my god, you missed it. You totally missed it. There you go. Oh, the other one's floating in the water. Oh my god. Here, you have one more. There you go. All right, ceiling, I hope you're full now. <laughs> All right, so next up we have my Abronias who are currently being housed together in their outdoor enclosure because it's been really nice outside and they really enjoy being outside. And I'm also trying to get them to breed because it's breeding season and having them outside kind of helps with that. So I just have, once again, some Dubia roaches in here that are dusted in calcium and I'm gonna be feeding them to my Abronias, Jupiter and Juno. All right, so next up we have my isopods. We have my powder orange, my dwarf whites, my giant canyons, my dairy cow isopods. Now the isopods do really like to eat the wood and the leaves and the dirt and stuff, but I also give them fresh veggies. So today I'm just giving them some greens and some of the containers will get more greens than the others will because um, mainly my dairy cow bin needs the most because there's a lot more in there. So next we have my African giant millipedes and again they like to eat the wood and the leaves and stuff like that but I'm just gonna give them some lettuce as well so they have more options. Next up, I gotta feed the fish, and I have, you know, a variety of different frozen foods that I like to feed them, because I like to rotate. Today, I think we're just gonna go with blood worms to keep it simple. So all I do is I take one cube of blood worms. I really don't need a lot. So the blood worms just come frozen in this little cube. And then I'm just gonna take some of the water from a fish tank and put it in there for it to thaw out a little bit in. And then... We just wait for it to thaw out and we can give it to the fishies. Hello friends, I'm back and I'm with Turtle because he's the next one we have to feed. So turtles are supposed to eat a lot of fresh veggies and insects and stuff like that, as well as I like to incorporate a pelleted diet into their diet as well. Turtle, for the first 12, 13 years of his life, 
did not have any insects or veggies or anything like that. He was only fed pellets. So now he doesn't really like to eat anything other than pellets, but I still offer him greens. He kind of picks at them a little bit. I'm trying my best. So I have uh, some romaine lettuce and it's on a clip and I'm just gonna stick it in the tank here and leave it there in case he wants to pick at it a little bit. And then for the pelleted part of his diet, I like to feed the Josh's Frogs aquatic turtle pellet. And if you would like to get 15% off your order on joshsfrogs.com, use code TYLERRUGGY and you'll get 15% off anything you order on their website, including aquatic turtle food if you need it or anything else. So. Yeah, use code TYLERRUGGY, joshesfrogs.com. So I just let the pellets soak in some water in a dish so that they soften up. And then I'm just gonna dump them in there for turtle to eat. Here you go, turtle. All right, so now we're in the basement. Welcome to my basement. It's kind of a mess. There's a bunch of dirty dishes down here because this is where we do dog food prep. But before we get to feeding Nova, we gotta start thawing out mice and rats and stuff for the snakes. Basically what I do is I have this tub that I fill with water. So we're gonna do that now. And you don't want the water to be like too warm or too cold. I just kind of have it like lukewarm. And then I put some water conditioner in there to make it dechlorinated, just so it's safer. And then I have a list of all my snakes and what size rodent each snake eats so that I kind of can keep track and I don't get confused. Because I have a lot of snakes. I have nine of them. So fuzzy mice. I have two snakes that eat fuzzy mice, Sprinkles eats a fuzzy mouse, and Gucci eats a fuzzy mouse. And then we have hopper mice, which Egret takes two hopper mice. Um, and then Aphrodite, my rainbow boa, gets a rat pup. I'm going to give a weaned rat to Opal and one to Tesla. My Retic Solomon is going to get a small rat. My Ball Python Monty gets a large rat. And then my Common Boa, Athena, is going to be getting a rabbit today. And this is my first time ever feeding her a rabbit. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes. And yeah, that's basically it. I'm just gonna let them thaw out in the water. And then I kind of feel the rats with my fingers to make sure they're thawed out all the way through. And then we're gonna go feed my snakes. But before we get into that, we're going to feed my dog, Nova. So for my dog, Nova, Nova's getting all excited because she can tell I'm gonna feed her. So for Nova, I feed my dog raw food. I know people have mixed opinions on raw diets, but I've done a lot of research. And in my opinion, raw diets are just the most like natural, whole, um, species appropriate thing that you can feed your dog. But whatever you choose to feed your dog, I'm not going to judge you. I've just decided to go with raw for Nova. And I've noticed a lot of really good, uh, benefits from her switching to raw and Overall, she just likes it a lot more. So this is what it looks like. It literally is just a pile of raw meat and it smells kind of gnarly. Ugh. I hate the smell of raw meat, ew, disgusting. But anything for you, Nozva. I don't like measure out and formulate my own raw diet. I get a prepared diet. So this is a diet that's already made and packaged for dogs. So it's already balanced and it has all of the added vitamins and everything that it needs. 
I get my raw dog food from a co-op and it actually turns out to be cheaper than the kibble that I was feeding her before. Nova's just been loving the raw. I haven't noticed any negatives to it yet, but anyways, I'm gonna stop trying to justify the fact that I feed my dog raw food because at the end of the day, who cares? You excited to get your food? It's dinner time. So again, I fed Nova her breakfast earlier. So this is just what's remaining. And yeah, it's just literally just raw meat. I don't know what to tell you. Um, I often will add fresh veggies like greens into the food. And sometimes I put kefir in there and sometimes I'll do egg. But this time I didn't add anything to it. It's just the dog food. But I do like to add veggies and stuff sometimes. You like it? You like it, Nova? Don't touch me with your raw mouth. Your raw mouth, Nova. It's all gone. There's no more. So now we're gonna wait for all the snake food to thaw out and then we're gonna go feed the snakes. And also tonight we're going to feed the crested geckos. I always wait until nighttime to give them their food since they're nocturnal. But yeah, I'll see you guys later to feed all of the nocturnal animals. 2,000 years later. Hello friends, we are back. So it is now almost 10 p.m. So we're ready to start feeding all of my nocturnal animals. We're going to start off with my snakes and then we'll probably do my scorpions and then the crested geckos and the roaches. So starting with my snakes, I'm going to feed all of my snakes that are I'm probably gonna start with my smaller snakes and then work up to the bigger snakes just because it makes it easier for me. So let's start with Sprinkles. I think Sprinkles, my corn snake, is my smallest snake right now. So let's feed Sprinkles. Oh, I see Sprinkles. Hi, Sprinkles. He's out, he's ready. Look at Sprinkles coming out of his little tube. Oh my God, he just went back in. He's like, nope, see you later. Sprinkles is ready. Oh my god, did you see that? There, you can see Gucci kind of in the back dragging it away. I'm really lucky because some hog noses, I feel like hog noses are kind of known to be pretty picky a lot of the time. She always takes her food like no problem. I got super lucky with Gucci. So yeah, that's Gucci. So next we have my carpet python egret, who is always usually a pretty good eater. Sometimes she misses, but yeah. There we go, she got it. So she's supposed to get two of those. She's probably actually good to move on to the next size. So now I know for the next time I feed her, I can probably just size her up. But this time around, she's gonna be getting two of those mice. I don't know if any of you guys saw my last video, but if you haven't, check it out because I set up this enclosure for her and it turned out pretty cool, I think. But yeah, you can see her already starting to swallow it. That was fast. Next, we have Tesla, my ball python. So yeah, that's Tesla, my VPI lesser exantic ball python. Tesla is a really good eater for me. I'm really lucky. I'm always worried about ball pythons not being good eaters, but Tesla so far has never refused a meal. And now just really quick, we're gonna go back to Egret to give her her other mouse. Come on. Okay, Egret's like, you know what? I'm not even gonna coil that one. I'm just gonna take it as it is. Honestly, go off, I don't blame you. My snakes are like, bitch, you can't fool me. I know this isn't a live mouse. Like, I'm not stupid. I'm not an idiot. I'm not gonna just strangle it when it's already dead. 
All right, so this is the container I keep my sunbeam snake opal in. And if you look really closely, you can see all of her little burrows. And basically what I usually do is I just leave the mouse or the rat by one of the holes and I'll close the lid. And then I check back in a couple hours and it's gone. Wait, you can actually see her. Do you see her? I'll see if I can like coax her out of there. See, she literally just grabbed it and she's gonna pull it into the ground now. You kind of got to see a little glimpse of her though. You can see Solomon back there. Oh my God. So I didn't really get his strike on camera, but he grabbed it really fast. Good job, Solomon. And again, Solomon's growing really fast. Just ignore the urate in that corner. I need to grab that. But yeah, Solomon is just so pretty. Hello. I'm just gonna close this real quick. There he goes. Just a long noodle. All right, so next up we have Monty, my ball python. And for anyone who cares, probably nobody, Monty's the first snake I ever got. Looks like he's gonna eat it. There we go, yes. I get so happy when Monty eats, because I've had issues in the past with Monty being a picky eater, but he's been pretty good recently. The last we have Athena eating her very first rabbit. Okay, was that it? You're not gonna coil it? It's kind of hard to see, but I put some Rapashi veggie burger in for the Madagascar hissing cockroaches in that little dish, and you can just see all of them starting to come out. You can just see them all like coming to eat. Next we have my three Asian forest scorpions. And they're each just gonna get a little dubia roach. So. Hello, sir. He is all yours. Take him. Oh, this one already grabbed hers. All right, so next up we have my hedgehog, Momo, who just woke up. So I feed Momo from mature gold cat food, but it's just a good cat food that I found has a good balance for hedgehogs because hedgehog diets that are marketed towards hedgehogs are actually terrible. So fun fact, find a good cat food and feed it to your hedgehog. I usually just give Momo, you know, like a couple little handfuls Momo being that cute isn't allowed. That's illegal. I love her little tongue, that's so cute. Don't forget to subscribe for more quality content. Isn't that right, Momo? So next up, I have to feed my crested geckos and here we have Luna. I'm really not sure what she's doing right now. Luna, what are you doing? She's just getting her early morning stretches in. And by early morning, I mean it's like 10.45 p.m. She's like, okay, fine, I'm just gonna leave then. So anyways, these are all of my crested gecko foods that I currently have. So we have four Pangea flavors and Rapashi. I like to kind of rotate between all of them just so my geckos are getting a good variety. I think today I'm gonna go with the banana and papaya gecko food. So, a little too much in that one. And we just gotta mix in some dechlorinated water. I literally just use my finger because I'm terrible. I'm a terrible person. All right, so this is Lance's enclosure and his ledge is like back here behind the plant. 
So I'm just gonna pull out the old dish. And yeah, I don't think you're gonna see Lance because he never really comes out. So I don't really like to dig through the enclosure looking for him. Pretend Lance is, oh, just kidding. I found him. There's Lance. But yeah, cool. At least you got to see him. And then Luna disappeared into her enclosure. I'm not really sure where she went, but I'm just gonna set the dish down here. Luna's ledge fell off, so I need to get a new one, but I usually just put the cup down here. I come down and need it no problem, so I don't really think it matters if there's a ledge or not. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed watching me feed all of my pets. So there were some pets that I did not feed in this video. My tarantulas did not need to be fed. However, I do have a feeding all of my tarantulas video that I did anyways. So if you're interested in seeing that, that will be linked down below. And then I didn't feed my crested gecko babies. For anyone who's new here, I have about 12 crested gecko babies because I bred my crested geckos that you just saw. I actually just gave them food like the day before I filmed so I didn't need to feed them and it also would have been really redundant because my adult crested geckos eat basically the same thing as my babies do so just imagine me filling up 12 more cups with Pangea gecko diet and putting it in with my crested gecko babies and that's basically all you missed. So again, linked down below will be the meet all my pets video if you want to actually see and meet all of my animals, including the few I didn't show in this video. You can also check out my house tour, which will be linked down below if you want to see more in depth of where things are located in my house and stuff like that. And then I will also have my feeding all my tarantulas video linked down below as well. But thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, if you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new here. And check out my social media links. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my animals and my other things going on in my life. My social media links will be linked down below if you want to check those out. And I will see you guys in my next video.